Hey everyone, welcome to the podcast. Episode number 12. Rob held in that burp until we started. <laughs> yeah, Rob just fucking yacked That's everywhere. A, I should get a verbal pat in the back from everybody for doing that. That was a hard burp too. That was a subway burp. Ooh. So Not even a Mr. Sub burp? No, or a Quiznos. Wow. So this week we uh we don't have Shane. He's in the Dominican right now. Rip, Shane's, Shane's just ripping funky monkeys right now. Probably. What is a funky monkey? What do you say? I, I think it was a mixture between like a an orange daiquiri and a mm. pina colada or something. Yeah, it's like a pina colada with banana. Hold up. <laughs> he roasts me for drinking strawberry daiquiris. Yeah. But, but he's having a drink that's a cross between a daiquiri and another quote unquote in his girls defense, drink. I don't actually know if he had a funky monkey. That was just my recommendation. <laughs> <laughs> and also the difference between like holding like a like a white clear liquid versus like having a giant pink frilly straw covered mini umbrella with berries sugar around everywhere. The rim. Whim. Strawberry daiquiri. Whim. Actually, wait. Can you can you Google a funky monkey? Because I was way too drunk when I was drinking them. I don't really <laughs> know what they are. <laughs> Dude, like you just want to know what they're made of? Yeah, yeah. She, well, like if Shane's out of resorts, all inclusive, he probably is, right? Oh, but but he's probably just like I'll take one of everything. Yeah, those those bars, man. Like they're so packed that you just gotta go give me five or something. Uh, that's why they're so packed because everyone's ordering five. <laughs> yeah. The, but, I look up Funky Monkey and the first thing I get is Funky Monkey Fabrics somewhere you just get in like Ontario. A curious George. <laughs> now, now you're like your ad, like your Google ads are going to be just nothing but like whatever this is. <laughs> just m- monkeys wearing hammer pants. <laughs> okay, so all the recipes are different, but the True. number one that came up was... Give me was the one that's closest to the what I said. One ounce of rum, right <laughs> one ounce of gold rum, one ounce of coconut rum, half a banana schnapps, half a white... Schnapps. Ch- schnapps. Schnapps. White chocolate liqueur. Schneider. Three ounces of <laughs> coconut milk, a banana, and a cup of ice. I would definitely punish one of those right now. That does not sound good. It sounds pretty good. It sounds like something tropical. Yeah, it sounds like... When, a- when you're on vacation somewhere sunny, you just want to drink anything that's like sounds out of the ordinary that's why i want to go to a resort with annie soon i drank him at the rooftop pool in mexico oh yeah you want to teach us your mexican as you called it (laughs) buenos noches preciosa (laughs) oh god you say that's quite impressive (laughs) i'm being honest (laughs) no it's not it's really not (laughs) is mexican i didn't roll the r yeah you gotta every r that you use in spanish you gotta like Uh, yeah basically you you gotta stick your tongue to the roof of your mouth drew just got some Something delivered to him. I got some five star service. Jeez. Thanks, Annie. <laughs> Thanks, Annie. And um, he brought me a coffee. Currently drinking 7 coffee. Seven p.m. At seven p.m. What a wild man. I like how you looked at your wrist. <laughs> There's no I watch. Have, I usually he's, have he's a not watch wearing on. a watch, but he checks. He consults his wrist anyways. That's hilarious. hair past but, a freckle. But just so you know, it's hair. buenas noches. What was the last word you said? Preciosa. 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 Yeah, yeah. Not preciosa. It's literally what I just said. White people. The pragmatic. Preciosa. White people. Yeah. White people. Wow, so racist. <laughs> so me and Annie have been watching a lot of the Netflix Annie Explains, and whatever. Annie and I. White people. Um, <laughs> and we keep watching all the ones that have to do with like race and true, like true. difference between things. And it's it's always, purpose? it basically always boils down to white people are the worst. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Can, and that's like Obviously. if you want to have a show that has easy, easy ratings just trash white people the whole time and everyone's gonna love it true that that's the key to success <laughs> but and the other key to success is being white yeah <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> um speaking <laughs> speaking of success that's a slippery slope a nice a nice segue to, to speaking about success um feel free to prepare me for my job interview with any tips and tricks wait this is this is live right <laughs> yeah. yeah um <laughs> You know, we can we can look and see if there's anyone has any uh, helpful tips for me later. But we never consult the chat, though. We we can't let them know that we like them. Actually, yeah, yeah. Sure. Chat who? Yeah, <laughs> maybe we can just bounce them off each other. But that again, that reminded me of a good uh, topic. Any weird stories we have from interviews? Although Christian's going to tell us only he's only ever had two interviews because no. he's a Man. self-made millionaire, so- <laughs> Twitch streamer, <laughs> Tesla buyer slash owner. So I forgot. I had to interview for my second Tesla. Yeah, actually. They, they asked me two questions. Does that count as an interview? So I forgot that I actually had a bunch of interviews for co-op. I completely <laughs> forgot about those. Um, and I actually do have two stories about interviews. Okay. So I, I can go first and we can go in like a circle. Okay. The first was... Uh, I just think the point out we make more of a triangle. Yeah, I was, I was, I was thinking that, but I didn't 
you know, I, the least <laughs> truce here. <laughs> I was like, I didn't interrupt. To say I will gladly interrupt to point out that we have three points. Anyways, um, for my worst interview ever, it was for a co-op position at, I think, a bank or something for some type of IT. And they had, there was two interviewers oh, that, and me. Pardon, that sounds awful. Continue. IT at a bank. <laughs> IT at a bank sounds <laughs> Or it was like some type of, I, it might have been like Sun Life or something, like some type of insurance or financial yeah, yeah. institution. Bank slash insurance. Equally yeah, awesome. Yeah. So I interviewed for it and like things were going well. They were asking me questions and I was answering them pretty well and they seemed pretty impressed. And they were like, okay, we're going to ask you like a workplace scenario question. Yeah. And they asked me something that I thought I knew the answer to. So I answered pretty confidently saying like, oh, do this, do that. And like, I f feel like this approach would be the best. Yeah. And I went on for about five minutes before I finished my answer. And then they looked at me and they're like, you did not answer at all. Like we asked you this. That's not at all what that means. Oh, like I completely gosh. got whatever term they were and talking about black wrong. And stomach opens yeah, up. And I was just like, like fuck. Oh, yeah. and I was like, well... Should I just leave? Is that what you say? <laughs> I, I basically felt like I should have said that at that point, but I was just like, oh, um, well, in that case, this would be my answer. But like, I always heard of it as this way, not that mm -hmm. way. And they were just kind of like brushed me off after that. They're like, yeah, that's the worst kind of shit ever. And it's not like I was like, oh, I, I think I know the answer. I was like, oh, no, I know what this is. It's, and then it's just wrong. It's the worst because like in a job interview, too, you're overanalyzing everything you do and say, like mm -hmm. the way you're sitting. So like. They when said, you, hey, with three Y's, yeah, like, what does this mean? Literally the smallest thing. It's like, oh, the breeze is going this way on the way in, so I got to <laughs> sit facing this way. But like the smallest little fuck up just feels like it's like times five million right in the middle of a job and then, interview. And then you just start thinking about that and you're like yeah, sweating and it's all you think about. Literally, bro. I get the worst interview sweats, but I found a life hack that helps me with that. I he put, tapes ice cubes to his armpits. <laughs> I, I, no, I, I was online before my last interview I had looking for tips and like i found one that actually kind of works for me I, I use hairspray but on days of interviews no obviously not every day don't judge me um wow hairspray? making fun of me for drinking strawberry dark yeah but yeah, yeah, yeah. Hairspray. Is, wow but uh, uh, probably uses dry shampoo too only, only on interview days man probably uses <laughs> conditioner too yeah what a guy never get conditioner the, get the luscious okay so my tip <laughs> that i use on interview days um so i i, I use i use i use hairspray okay. <laughs> i put hairspray and a in, in my hair and then what I do is I take the hairspray and do a quick line across my forehead because that's where I sweat the most. <laughs> what? And then the, the hairspray solidifies on my forehead, right? So it's just a block of sweat yeah. as opposed to sweat dripping down. Well, like the sweat doesn't drip down my face. It all stays in my hairline, right? Nike headband? Not anymore. <laughs> just literally. And like... It, just hairspray your forehead. Like if I'm, if I'm sweating enough, it'll like break down the dam of like hairspray that I that's there. Okay. But like... I did it for my one I just had, and it worked pretty well. Like I went, like it, <laughs> I, I kept most of it off my fa like face, and then like you know, it the, like it's a good strap, man. You know, it's a strap. That's it's like, like it's a it's new like, interviewing it's like, meta. It's like you know, in, uh, in boxing, when they put Vaseline on people's faces to stop the the blood from opening and cuts from opening. Oh yeah, it's the same kind of process. You know, just block up your pores for a bit. Christian wouldn't know anything about this, but when you were doing buggies, you'd have to like slap the toilet paper and like wet it a bit up into your yeah uh, you guys told me about that up into man what? ponds yeah, yeah a yeah. man pond i wouldn't wet it but i would definitely wedge like a festival of it depends up on the severity like a man That's so weird you've never used a man pond no i don't sweat that much i sweat all the yeah. time even so when i was doing buggies for that i'm short. sweating right now i sweat oh yeah like i sweat i wake up and start sweating sometimes i'm not even kidding your whole so, life is just one big sweat. yeah so job interviews are always a bit of like no matter how confident i am i always get that there were like a few waves of interview sweats that come and go. Mm -hmm. But I think that's relatively normal. At least yeah, I you got this, is. bro. Yeah. So, I don't know. Well, I'm going to be putting on a shit ton of hairspray tomorrow. I'm going to, I don't know, i got to shave my face, which everyone's probably going to be pretty Thanks. excited. Yeah. To see hey, bless up. That means you'll finally look good for the video podcast if it's up next if week. If it's up for, yeah, I guess so. But like once my stash was back, it's never leaving. So, I'll quickly to throw <laughs> You're going to get the job before you start growing it out. Yeah, let's hope quickly to throw it in i realized this or just yesterday i was like okay thinking logistics of the video podcast and i was like okay the plan is for next monday for Can it we just to call it a vodcast whatever Vo vodcast anyways my anyways, plan was like okay it's for yeah. next monday everything should be fine i was like wait i need to get like two cameras two tripods cables for everything everything set up the whole wall mounted tv yep. if we put that up table um get a computer set up and running for everything i was like oh shit i'm not at all ready for this it's gonna be more 
work than this the setup we're at right now yeah or like your gaming slash recording setup Mm -hmm. there's gonna be a lot more wires i don't know what i'm gonna do for the computer maybe we should revisit the the logistics behind everything make sure it's feasible well it's already the ball is already rolling like i'm down for whatever you guys have cooked up but like i also don't want it to become just like buddy uh, you know what i mean we're we're going high production value on this Mm -hmm. i trust you guys as long as you got a camera on me to make myself look pretty yeah by shaving I will be shaving. So hey. should, I, should I send a pic? Should I post a picture? Because everyone knows me with the mustache, right? When was the last time you guys saw me without a mustache? Probably before you hit puberty. That's a good point, actually. Yeah. Like I never really thought about it, but I don't remember the last. I don't time remember I saw what you I look like without a mustache. Stashless. It's like last time I remember shaving it was when I went for my first co-op interview in first year. So that would have been a while ago. F- five years almost. Do you think that's why Rob's gotten all his jobs? Because they're like, man, if this guy is confident enough to come into this interview with that ugly ass facial hair, (laughs) this man's confident enough to sell our products. Well, like give this guy a suit, put him in head office. Literally like the my second co-op I interviewed with the mustache and the the one person actually made a little bit of a joke about it. No, really? They were just kind of like, I forget exactly what it was, but they had been made a joke being like, oh, you're lucky that you're like they made a joke saying that you're lucky that you're good enough looking with the mustache and not have to shave it for something like this and i was like oh i thank you man i was just like yeah that was a nice the little tires, was the, the gay boss? no 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 that's, okay. this is a completely different job but what? uh yeah it was funny i was gonna say then yeah no that would have been because that would have been quite the dynamic for a job <laughs> interview that's for sure <laughs> <laughs> uh no that that interview actually was my most intense one i would say like it was just like they had me doing like well, actually, here I guess this could this has my first interview story. Um, the interview like started off, told three. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the, the interview uh, started off like, a, like pretty normal. Um, they were asked like, like, so how do you feel about this? Blah blah blah. And then the, and then like I guess everything went well. I gave them the right answers. Then they randomly just took out this giant like rep- Republic of Gamers laptop with like two external hard drives plugged into it, <laughs> and they were like, find this program, open it, and use it to do this. And they were, and this just completely out of the blue. What kind of job was this? This for? was for the first one I had. So it was for like a, it was like they made VR tours for stuff. So the job was to kind of, well, they did a lot more than that. But this, for the and, and for the, uh, for the sake of context, they were like making me use one of their proprietary, like programs. See, how, and then they told me after, like once I got hired, they told me they only do that for certain people to see how they pick up new, um, software, new, new stuff. Yeah, so. It was, it was nerve wracking though. Like they were like, I was like, can I ask you guys questions? They were like, nope. I was like, how does this work? They were like, you, you can't ask us questions. So then, oh uh, but I actually, like it was nice. They, they hid a little, like, uh, what do you call like the, like a, the readme file. Yeah. Like a dot TXT. Yeah. Um, they, they hit it on the desktop and like you kind of, like if you were had this done a quick look, you would have seen the thing there being like, and it literally said in all capitals tips for using program. So I guess they were trying to see like if you were like you know aware, yeah. if you're like laser focused. Yeah. Trying to look at the so big like, I, so I found it and used it, and <laughs> so then uh, so I like, didn't find it. <laughs> they were like, we they, only three people got to the stage. You're the only one who knew knew how to do it. So they were like, congrats. You're pre- like, pretty, you're pretty much hired. And I was like, fuck yeah. Nice. But uh, at the same time, I was kind of like, wait, so they're only hiring me because I know how to do this, or they're hiring me because they like me as a person. Who knows? It was but, probably just like they only did that to the people who actually made it far enough where they're like, we will hire you if you can figure I guess this so. out. It's yeah. like they liked you enough as a person that they're oh, yeah, like... Oh, yeah, because they can... were trashing people that were in my class. They, they were trashing my classmates. And every, really? And before and after, they were like, this guy's too cocky. This guy, like, lied about everything. This guy, like, froze and didn't, didn't answer half our questions. And I was like, damn. But obviously, I didn't want to go around telling everyone that because I'm too... Uh, too humble. Too humble. Maybe that was another test. Ah, Maybe they were like, I wonder if this guy will like gossip in the workplace. So they started throwing lies yeah. at you to see if you would tell that other people. Be. That reminds Sketchy. me actually That's on my cool. second co-op. That reminds me. Um, I actually found a folder that had my name on it that was left off, left out in like a meeting room. And I, I, to this, I didn't open it, but to this day, I swear what, that was like not? some sort of test to see if I had, like, because they knew I would be in this room at a certain point and they knew that I would probably see it. Yo, you're, so I feel like they, they just, just left it they're out just there. They were just giving mind games. I, <laughs> Little did Rob know this is actually the introduction into like the FBI, yeah, like the yeah. dark to see if he the can... dark brotherhood. If Rob had opened it, it's like congrats on your ten thousand dollar raise. <laughs> well, I really wanted to go look at it, dude. Like, oh, because I was just you I would have looked. I was it was burning 
but like it was it it's was, got your name on it man i know but like it was there was in a position that like if i had picked it up and fucked with it like you would have been able to tell someone picked it up because like it was like a loose leaf portfolio full of documents it's got your name on it man i know but i didn't touch it it's like mail address yeah, to you could you imagine if they were just like that's personal information like, it's my information <laughs> yeah it's me <laughs> there's like pictures of me eating and stuff dude <laughs> like this has some spy file picture of but, rob just like working out literally one of him in his bed at home <laughs> yeah wait what <laughs> one of me looking at the actual thing li- and, and, and li- in real time <laughs> just starts printing out <laughs> That'd be pretty yikes fun. anyways drew do you have any I don't, I don't have any weird ones to be honest the only like this the is the white in- privilege talking right here it's like <laughs> walked in they just offered me the job yeah <laughs> pretty much um no literally so the first like to, for working at zares like mutual friend yeah was literally my he, zares interview was a fucking he got me a job shit show. they asked me my favorite uh pc product i'm like chicken fingers <laughs> i swear to god i said chicken fingers and they're like okay okay <laughs> that makes sense and uh I, yeah that was strange my, my current job though was probably the most intense so there was four different levels of interviewing oh gosh and then the last one was like a panel interview with like everyone that i was competing against that's what i've got tomorrow and well the, it's just i think it's uh, were you against other people at the same time or is it yeah, just you but like not not necessarily against it was a series of presentations we had to present to a panel oh, okay so like the first one they gave us a, a sheet of paper with a picture on it just like a random picture and as a group we had to come up with what it was and like how we were going to pitch it that's good that's a pretty cool idea for an interview and actually. then they also were like hey switch up your groups okay you have five hundred dollars how do you help the community and it's like kind of weird oh it's kind of sick though yeah. and then uh <laughs> one chick <laughs> so then we had like we went around we to tell a bit of ourselves at the end yeah when chick started crying and it was the most awkward oh thing yeah in she the went world. for like the sob story harm yeah type but, thing. yeah but like very sob story yeah. and then she was just she couldn't even finish her sob story she was crying and we we're like well, it's like, no, who wants to hire this? You know what I mean? Wait, was she like crying because she was like stressed or just like faking it just to... I don't really it, know. It's probably both. It's like once you do one, you commit to the other, you know? Like if her story was completely true, she probably had a reasonable amount to cry about. It was pretty sad, yeah, but... Yeah, like not in a job interview. I th- yeah, I was like, maybe pick a different story to tell. Yeah. And then the guy beside her like tried to pour her a glass of water. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> just dumps you on guys her are just all so fake. What is happening? Yeah. <laughs> well, like, when, it's so funny like, when people are in a situation like that when they're trying to get a job or trying to impress people, you can just pick apart like how cringely fake people are being. Oh, man, it drives me nuts. Mm-hmm. Especially when I was at like at my work at the bookstore for the school I went to, like I knew my time there was limited, so I didn't really care too much. But like the manager's always holding like promotions and bonuses above everyone's heads, being like, "Yeah, do this," and everyone Wait, is just actually? going balls to the wall. Like it was like at someone a, would come at into a the campus store. bookstore. Yeah, someone would come into the store. Like it wasn't crazy like, gift cards and shit, right? But I was like, like, I'm gonna sell the most degree frames today. No, literally, <laughs> every, like everyone was like, "Do you, like why do you even care about what you're doing here?" And I was like not really i'm moving home in a couple weeks so um but i was like well, i didn't say that obviously but uh i was like more for the youngins to get after um <laughs> but like it'd be funny because it's usually it's usually so dead especially during the summer so like so one cut you probably get one customer every like hour and that one customer just gets swamped by three <laughs> people all just so excited Man, to help them that was and like, just like dude i feel so bad for this guy he probably came one guy came in for a lapel for his uh suit lapel lapel whatever same thing a lapel <laughs> And a label doodle and this guy poor guy like i was just at the cashier checking it out but like he had to answer like a thousand questions about like what courses he, courses he's in and like <laughs> what textbooks what he textbooks needs. he needs or if he wants any spirit wear or if he's going to homecoming and just like this poor guy <laughs> i was like i understand the process of upselling but it gets to a point where you have to like find the man that was, yeah I, I hate those retail experiences where oh, people so just don't fuck. leave you alone oh well the upselling part reminds me of another interview that i actually completely forgot i had yeah um when i moved for Should school get upsold in an interview no when i moved I feel like you take that <laughs> when i moved we'll give you this job for we'll school give you this anyways i uh i went to apply at the source i think oh. you know which one i'm talking about I worked close there. to campus true I worked there uh, by the metro. Sh- okay, yeah. Yeah, so I applied at a, managed, but. at a source, and I walked in. Wait, really? You applied yeah. there? Yeah. <laughs> um, the this was, like, before YouTube was really, like, profitable enough. True. I was like, I need a part-time job. Yeah. Luckily, YouTube being Back profitable right after that. So. 
Um, I didn't end up getting the job, but when I went there, I walked in. I was like, hey, I'm here for the job interview. And the guy's like, oh, yeah, just sit down and wait um, or like walk around. You got like 10 minutes. So I walked around and then eventually the guy like finished his other interview, came out and he like looked at me and he's like, are you here for an interview? I was like, yeah. And he's like, Sarah? I'm like, <laughs> oh, well, I'm a guy. But... And I was like, no. And Josephine? He's like, <laughs> and he's like, oh, well, like I have this girl's name here. Like, I don't think your interview is today. I'm like, I pulled up like the email and everything. I was like, yeah. it literally says that it's for this one here. And he's like, oh, let me go figure it out. And then the girl walks in for her interview. <laughs> I'm like, I think there was a mix up or something. Yeah. So apparently he calls around and like, I was supposed to get an interview at a store that was like an hour away Fuck in a different that. city. I'm like, no, like, I applied here. It says it's for this one. Yeah. So he still gave me an interview anyways. But I went nice in, guy. started chatting with him, and then like told him about my retail experience. And then probably in sweatpants, by the way, <laughs> Twitch sweatpants. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then I told him about how much I knew about technology and that it would help with the sales. And then like the final question before he let me go was, how would you feel about upselling um, like warranty and old products to older people? And I was it's like, how, like do you, how do you feel about scamming elderly people? Yeah. No, and then he's just really? like, and I was just like, what do you mean? He's just like, well, like if an elderly woman comes in, like how would you feel about trying to increase the price of her plan for like on her, her phone or something <laughs> trying Fucking to sell her like base. an i9 <laughs> yeah and i was just like um like i understand that it's necessary in retail i would try to like actually give them the product they need over products they don't need but i can understand where it's necessary and he's like yeah. okay and he just let me go so i'm like i'm pretty sure that's where i bombed that's it pretty much, that's pretty much they taught me the same thing too mm -hmm. like i because i worked at the source i i quit I, like i was on a contract and they were like you can come back if you want so pretty managed i won't say where it was but the my manager actually got fired for sexual harassment <laughs> so that goes to say how that story was going Jeez. Um, was it in the mall well like it wasn't in town it was when i was oh, okay. um I was gonna say that mall and their managers no nah, fuck that <laughs> uh but then yeah like i was getting drilled with the same questions where like they didn't ask about elderly people but for me it was like it was just kind of like they were what they're they're they want you to think in a way where you're like you've try to squeeze every dollar amount of every single customer yeah and it's like i understand why it's necessary but like people are like you're gonna have someone like it which may work for like kind of someone who has like a weaker personality and will kind of say yes to everything but it takes one person to come in the store that knows what they want and realizes they're getting bullshitted and just tells everyone don't go to the store you know what yeah. i mean that's why you got to kind of adjust your selling tactics to each person yeah, so you know if it's an mean? old lady, you're like, yeah. lady, you need this i9, 9900K <laughs> hey, processor. Hey, I, you can't even read your bank card, but just give me it and I'll put it in and buy everything you need. <laughs> tell, tell me your pin and yeah, I'll take care Tell me your pin rest. and I'll take care of the rest, lady. You just e-transfer you yourself like a thousand bucks on your credit. <laughs> Log yourself into online banking for me real quick. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, I need your uh, online banking and social insurance number real yeah. quick. What's your mom's maiden name real quick? Yeah, what's <laughs> your, uh, what was the first pet you ever had? <laughs> yeah. for, just, just for security questions. For no big deal or anything. <laughs> no, but for real though, like there's scumbags, like scumbag companies out there. Yeah. Like I really don't want to work retail. Like I know that I'm in, I have a retail job right now, but I'm hoping it's like a part time on the side and it's not quite the same like the like where i'm at now it's not so much like individual products it's more of a like service plan so yeah. it's a little easier to man. not be a dick about it but. i hate when people are hounding me when i'm trying to buy stuff yeah fuck, i went man. into a hockey life uh sunday what's that saturday it's like a pro hockey you, life. I, they just sell hockey what do you shit. think it's it is just like well, it could be a sports <laughs> store it could be like I it's don't called know. hockey life it's like just imagine like, what do they sell there just hockey gear? anything That's to it? do with hockey like jerseys that, they actually have stores jerseys, solely for hockey clothes, yeah. sticks pads oh my god like from what i know it's kind of on the decline but back in the day it would just be the place to be there was like they sold yeah. that live ice demo in there yeah yeah, yeah. they still have it okay so that's where, where i'm confused because i was thinking there's so many stores out there that literally have products for every single yeah. sport. Why would you want one store solely it's dedicated to hockey? All hockey. And it's, it's that one seems of like a horrible business it's, decision. It's one of those Great places idea. that like you kind of go to just On the decline. Just, just to say that you got just just to say you went. Oh, I got it from hockey. Like, so the it's one so dumb. the it's one dumb, nice thing too, yeah. it's a little bougie. It's like it's, things are a little more expensive. I I bought all my shit from there when I went like but, on a Black Friday with my dad like two years ago, and I can't remember him being pretty pissed off being I thought it was supposed to be cheap. It's Black Friday sale. But I got all, I, again, I was buying Warrior everything, so maybe that's why. But anyways, there you go. That's yeah. all you need. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, you're but they have a, they have a little spot in the back, and it's a little ice pad. I don't think it's actual ice, but it's like simulated, 
and the idea is you take like before you buy a stick you take it in there you can shoot like a bunch of pucks to make sure you like the stick and stuff yeah okay. anyway the most annoying thing i wasn't even there to buy anything <laughs> and i'm just browsing through the sticks because Bree's brother wanted to get a stick and we had six different people come up to us hey do you need help with anything yeah no fuck off. yeah it's like especially if they I, I i'll give a uh a pass to the first two but like after that everyone you know what i mean they've mm-hmm. seen you in the store they see people try to approach you it's like when you go to any store in the mall you just can sense someone just creeping in on you just waiting to ask you something in their it's defense like, uh, we were looking at 400 hundred dollar sticks so they're probably so. like if they're seeing, on, com- if they're they're on commission, dollar signs then, uh, but yeah but god it was it was infuriating hockey equipment's dumb expensive yeah, so this is what it's, it's like to be white huh i go into a store people are like they turn their head. They don't even look at me. <laughs> He's not buying anything. <laughs> I'm wearing sweatpants and hoodies, and they're just like, this guy's not bringing anything to the store. And he goes and into Tesla. It's like, Tesla, oh, you've come yeah. back for your third one, Christian. Yeah. That's well, like, it's like uh, rich people don't look rich. Yeah. Well, like the people who aren't rich look rich. Okay, so we, I watched a Netflix explain on this with Annie, and they were talking about th- what they call athleisure. So like sportswear how everyone like lululemon like, yeah so like yeah. all the people I now love, i love wearing everyone like who's got money like wears just jeans sweats or whatever yeah so, yeah um, like a nice pair of jeans and yeah and in, in a that nice pair of jeans <laughs> and in that documentary they talked to a really yeah, high-end they... <laughs> italian fashion store <laughs> and they were like okay if someone comes in wearing like sweats and another person comes in wearing like a fur coat and like fancy pants and everything who do you expect to like spend more money? And they were like, every single time, it's always the person in the sportswear. Yeah, man. Probably. The chick in the fur coat has to like call her husband, like, "Hey, <laughs> credit <laughs> card got declined. <laughs> what you gonna which, do? Which one, honey?" <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then, so the, like the bottom line was just saying that people who are more comfortable in wearing whatever they want usually have the money and they don't feel the need to impress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're just. I agree with that. And like, they're more they're. They prefer to be comfortable, which is why when I went for my first Tesla test drive and my sister asked the cat or salesperson, she's like, are you surprised? Like seeing a 21 year old kid in here trying to buy one. Yeah. And she's like, oh, like just the other day, some guy walked in with sweatpants and a sweater and just like put cash down for a Tesla. Yes. She's like, It happens every day. People don't like we, they can't judge. You know how most people try and flex by wearing like a nice suit. And yeah. whatever. Christian's like the opposite. He's trying to flex by wearing like the grungiest sweatpants. <laughs> yeah, he he's can like, find. I look disgusting. Like, I'm so rich. I got I got holy sweatpants. He's like, man. I'm so rich that I look homeless. <laughs> you should just go like ro- roll around in the dumpster for a bit for your next event. Just rip up all your so, shit. He goes and sleeps under a bridge, then dude, <laughs> yeah. buys a Tesla the next day. <laughs> See, I'm, I'm so for the people. I do this kind of shit. I, for the next event, he's relatable. Hashtag woo woo. <laughs> for the next event. <laughs> Yeah. I've I've decided I'm going to Vegas. Um, oh, so I really. Oh, you are. Yeah. Christian hates his family. He's he's ditching their family <laughs> Christmas dinner so we can go so we can go blow all his money at Vegas. So for the event, strippers. <laughs> I'm trying to Sorry, convince. Whoa. I'm trying to convince the group chat of all the other creators to like that we should all get suits, just like really nice suits, and just be fancy for yeah. once because we're in vegas right yeah. there you go if you want to see your content creators in suits comment down below <laughs> <laughs> your favorite content creators <laughs> but so far like we got creators like varsity gaming varsity limited gaming we got <laughs> macy j we got yo boy roy Ro- boy Ro- him <laughs> Ro- boy Ro- <laughs> him and priest I actually was on priest for the other day he has some funny tweets <laughs> but anyways continue uh, but basically just like that's my one excuse. I really want to wear a suit because mm-hmm. then I can business expense it, but almost no one else wants to get one. Just can tell they them business they can expense business, it? Yeah, tell them they can too. Why don't they, they just expense it? Or are they not what? incorporated like you are? Well, like they can, but most people, like they just don't want to spend the money maybe. Yeah, I don't know. I guess. But they're just like, what? what's the point of getting a suit? Meanwhile, I'm just like, I fucking want it. Baller yeah, When was the last time you wore a suit? Do you remember? Never. For my last uh, co-op interview. Nice. Do you have one? Um, does, I have... Does it fit? I have like... Uh, dress pants and a vest. The vest doesn't really fit anymore. It's vests are pretty true. Why vests do I feel are pretty like there's outdated a picture of also. Christian in his vest? There I've seen it. You've, I've, you've definitely seen yeah, it. Yeah, I remember that vest. And then, um, oh, that's what I've been using for the last few events. And then I also have um, like a old suit that I use for uh, interviews, but it's like one that's off the rack, so it's not really. You gotta get a new one that probably fits you, you better. Please just get like a custom three piece. Th- so that's oh, not a three piece. Why not? <laughs> like a three piece tux. Or no, three no, piece three-piece suit. suit. Oh, well, um, the, and you maybe. can also go no, like no tie is the new tie, right? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. true. So well, like, like vests and no tie are yeah. apparently. The I know, but a vest like, and bow ties. Like, a vest is like you have to you have to be either like an Italian mob boss. You have to be like or like Liam above Hemsworth. the age of sixty five or Liam Liam. Hemsworth. I looked good in a vest, I think. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, you okay. look great, man. <laughs> <Fuck> you, yeah. <laughs> I thought I looked great. My mom like, said I was stunning. You, you looked good, but that was also in like seven years ago, probably. No, yeah. that was like two years ago. <laughs> Yeah. whatever same shit Yikes. different shitter um <laughs> <Yikes>. <laughs> but i do want to get like a bespoke suit because yeah man get a get a custom joseph abood from moors i don't know what Abood. that means but it's it's only like 900 it's actually a lot cheaper than i expected yeah it's custom oh so i wanted to and made in canada merino wool i, I wanted to get a what suit because i want the best hanes fabric out there yeah well i maybe. watched kingsman on the flights to japan and back so like Oxford's they're all wearing not suits yeah, they're all wearing super nice, like tailored suits. I'm like, these guys look so fucking classy. And that's and that's where the suit idea came. <laughs> and these I'm guys like, I like want they're about this. to go smash some video games, yeah. <laughs> smash some like buttons, get a, get, get a 4K. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm gonna see if I can convince everyone to do it because I really want to. And Man, like, I the, think that you do it regardless. The, I I think I will. The event's only three weeks away, so I feel like if I need a tailored suit, I have to act now and then we should, should record go. some data how many sponsorship opportunities you got from the last ones and this one where you're in a suit imagine we got sponsored by like a suit company Holy yo fuck. that would be sick i would i would personally I would, count for like thousands of dollars i would use your discount code <laughs> i would use my own discount code yeah <laughs> Rob would it walk in he's like it's our nasty <laughs> <laughs> i'm talking like some, someone's super professional suit so they're my, uh, what do you like my code to be can you make it nasty 69 <laughs> <laughs> it was funny though because at my first co-op i had this old ass suit like the jacket was my dad's old jacket pants were that's so wholesome they were like black khakis they weren't even really dressed pants nice <laughs> my Ooh. shoes were beat to shit <laughs> And we're going to a trade show in like two weeks. And my my boss at the time was like, "Hey, bring where your suit to work tomorrow, so I can get a feel for it or get a look at it." <laughs> whoa, whoa, <laughs> uh, Mr. Boss. <laughs> and then I and then I sh- show up, and he's just like, I can tell he's like, he's like covering his mouth for not to smile and laugh at me, right? And I was like, "What the fuck, man? This looks that bad." <laughs> but he ended up getting me a whole new suit. So, he bought you one what yeah. business expense and everything i guess so yeah oh my like, god like it was crazy because the first like it didn't pay that sick because like like a minimum wage was what like that that it was in 2017 so probably like 13 dollars bucks yeah and i and no, my and it was a co-op but it paid 14 an oh, hour I wasn't, I wasn't working it was only paying for me 14 an hour yeah. so i was like and my friends are making like again co-ops are like 20s ish right and i was like oh but like the reason I took it, took it was because the company seemed really cool. It was like seven or eight minutes from my house, so save money on gas and all that kind of shit. It was eleven twenty five, by the way. Oh, okay, so it was about three bucks over minimum wage at the time, but yeah. still. At, and then I was kind of weighing out pros and cons, and that. So, I, but but ultimately, I think it was, like if you kind of took all the money out on the stuff they bought, like spent on me or bought for me, like the suit. Got to go to Vegas. I really stayed at a really nice place. Got to go to Orlando. Was in Toronto all the time eating at really nice places i bet like if you averaged out all the money they spent on me it would have been like 22 an hour or 23 Jeez. an hour because like you know what i mean like it was yeah. it was a really low pay wi- got pay them rate, benefits but like everything on top of that like i would have worked for 10 bucks an hour at that place probably it's so, yeah. i was actually gonna ask how much of a cut would you guys take on your salary just to get benefits like that where they just buy tri- you everything like current like, say, like, salary let's or... say yeah sure zero <laughs> You wouldn't like even if they were like we'll fly you out to like an event like once every quarter we'll like treat you to dinner well, like, when okay, you're there. Like I mean we, I don't make that much to begin with. Like I, mm. I, I let's put some uh, hypothetical numbers to it just to kind of for the sake let's of say talking you're about making it. a sixty k job. Yeah, so if I'm making sixty k and the job is like in town, I'm relatively satisfied with it, and like the benefits coming in are like let's say take us to a football game once a year, like expense <laughs> lunch and dinners. <laughs> Like most places get now, to meet the Vikings. <laughs> oh, fucking, I'd pay them to work for them. <laughs> Fuck it. Uh, but like most places now too have these like health like tabs, right? Where you can spend money on like your gym membership and everything gets reimbursed to you. Yeah. So if they had that too, and just kind of like let's say on average like one thing that I don't have to pay for that I would have been paying for, I would probably work for like forty five k. I would say like 
if it was like a quarterly trip to somewhere and yeah. like they pay for dinners and stuff, I'd probably take like a 10k hit. Yeah, because ten or fifteen k for me. On top of that. Again, because like you get to do cool shit, mm-hmm. still getting paid for it, and then and generally it adds up to more than yeah. Than and that's what I was trying to say with, with the co-op thing was like if you quantified all the money they spent, probably be pretty up there. I'd have but, to calculate the net present value of yeah, both yeah. Options. Like obviously, like if I was going like detail into it, I need to know how much I'm making now, how much I will make. How much the estimated value of everything I'm getting is, mm-hmm. yada yada. But yeah, around ten or fifteen k. Well, usually when companies do that, it makes even if it like doesn't, or even if you technically lose money by taking a lower wage, usually it still makes you happier because everything you need is dealt with. Like yeah. you don't have to get your own insurance. You don't have to go. Yeah, for sure. Do your own things. Like everything is paid for. You don't have to worry about it. And, and generally, your happiness. Is and that's like Brie. Brie has the best cell phone deal through her work. Because she has, they they pay into Rogers Direct, so she already gets like cheap discounts on her plans, and then they reimburse her eighty dollars a month for her phone plan. So I think she's got she just got like a new iPhone eleven, damn, and she pays ten dollars a month after all of her like reimbursements from work. Jeez, I wish, dude. Fuck. And she has like ten gigs of data or something ridiculous. I actually just got an email about that because now that I'm banking with RBC, they were like, oh, we have business deals for you, and one of them was. If I open up like a business phone line with multiple cell phones, I can get like a 10 gig plan for like 40 bucks per phone line. Toss me on that fucking so I was, plan. <laughs> and I didn't even think about this until now. I was like, if we just all got phones on there, we could all pay like 40 bucks a month Fuck for it. 10 gigs. I'm not, like, not even bullshitting. But is it Get like, a, on that. is it a pooled 10 gigs? No, it's 10 gigs each. I'm pretty sure. What? I'm on Wi Fi like 99% of the time. <laughs> I'm, I'm on Wi Fi. <laughs> <laughs> My plan is Wi-Fi. <laughs> like, literally, it's like, I don't need... I have my sister's old iPod, and I just use Wi-Fi. Literally, bro. I, I, I would need, like, a gig of data per month. That's a nutty deal. Go. Only if I can get an 11 Pro. I just need... I, dude, I've had the same phone for almost six years. Same. I'm getting a new one in January. No, wait. Really? I thought you just got that one, like, last year. It's a 6S. Oh, I guess... This thing's, no, this thing's ancient. Do you usually keep it in a case? It looks small all of a sudden. No. no. No, oh. I have before, but I don't know. No, but yeah, I've I've been having like, especially in like today's day and age, where like your phone is like your ext- extension of your body. I'm stuck with this. So- I'm stuck with this brick of an Android S6. Man, I hate this thing because of the battery. I literally have to bring a charger with me really? when I go. It's How at, fast does it lose? It's at eight percent, and I've charged it up to sixty today. Gross. From zero again. Jeez. It's bad. Mine's like the battery life on mine's relatively consistent, but it's weird. Uh, it won't charge past like eighty five. And it dies around 20. But like that stretch of time between there is really, is really consistent. That's what mine was doing. And then I got a new battery and now it's awful again. Yeah, so I just, I'm waiting for my plan to be up in January and then I'm just getting a new phone. Yeah, that works. Well, I looked it up and I, as far as I can tell, it's 10 gigs per phone line and $45 per Dude, phone. Dude, like fuck. Let's do that tomorrow. <laughs> I'm not <laughs> even kidding. tomorrow. <laughs> like I'm desperate to get a new phone. Like my... Like my well, I don't know. I to, think you might have to bring a phone or I don't know how it I, works, I, I, I can probably... You probably have I'll to. probably be able to maybe get one my like i was talking to my parents about like a christmas gift so maybe this will tie in nicely to that i don't even know if i'm on a contract so it might be i do but like i'm i was with kudo and they're fucking me over if anyone's listening to this don't go with kudo, kudo. they canceled their I, have i rent gone off of this before no, i feel probably. familiar for some go reason. ahead anyways they canceled their upgrade uh like way of doing things so you can't get an upgrade on your phone anymore and when they did that they reset all the they call it a tab. They reset all the money that you had towards something and transferred it into some stupid kudo credit, which is next to useless. Oh, that is scamazi. That, so basically, like, you gave them money and that they just converted well, into credits. Well, like, I got this phone in uh, grade grade 9 because I had a BlackBerry before. And then by grade 11, I was supposed to be, able to be eligible for an upgrade. But but at the time, I think I forget exactly what happened. But I just I either liked my phone or I just didn't end up getting an up, upgrade. Anyways, and then the year after, they were like, "Yeah, you can come in and get." I think the iPhone at the time was the. It was one of the first ones that had the um, the weird plug-in thing that didn't have an off yeah, code anymore. The light. Oh. So what? whatever whatever year that was. Wait, what? The, the, there was a year of iPhone that started the no aux oh. cord thing. Oh, iPhone seven. Yeah, oh, maybe, maybe gotcha. it was that. Um. So I go to Kudo, to, this is about in grade, well, whatever I said. And they said, yeah, we don't do that anymore. We, we don't do upgrades. And then I was like, what the heck? Yada, yada, yada. I'm still have the same phone. I'm trying to get rid of it. 
You can barely use Snapchat anymore. Sorry, I could, ladies. I, I have an old phone. All you have to do is repair the power button, and then it works. What's so, a, what do you mean, repair the power button? So, like, I had a Pixel 1, and yeah. then it broke, and I was like, fuck it. I'm just going to go get a new phone because I didn't want to waste time trying to fix it. So, it's broken. Um, but, it, like, as far as I'm aware, it's just the power button on the side is broken. So, like, all you have to do is take it in somewhere, and they'll fix it. Because yeah. all it would do is just power cycle constantly, which meant that the button was being held down permanently. Oh, gosh. So like uh, you could take it to like a phone place and I think you could fix it for like forty bucks and it's brand so new. Something basically. to look into. Still forty bucks is forty bucks. Yikes! <laughs> <laughs> As opposed to paying two hundred dollars for a phone, sure. Hey man, that's sixty percent of his net worth. <laughs> no, I'm down to like bank account update. <laughs> I think I'm like getting close to single digits if I'm not there already because my insurance came out today. Yikes! Or what day is it today? Twenty something. Twenty something. Twenty. Yeah, it's around. It's around now that it comes out. So I made sure there's money in there for it, but once it comes out, there's nothing left except for like some pennies and cockroaches. <laughs> some, some pennies like, and like, if, like if you could visualize my bank account, it'd be like a empty, giant, great just concrete room with like a few like coins in the middle, like a and then just like a bunch nest. of like rats and shit running around the corners. Some of skeletons, it. yeah, literally. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I don't know. Fingers crossed, I get rich. <laughs> that reminds me so on my way over here today i was listening to the cbc radio and they were telling a story so the cfl game was last night i oh, know cup. you didn't or yeah sorry great cup i know you didn't watch did you watch i didn't even know it was a thing like it's like the super bowl of i'm CFL. a terrible yeah. canadian in the sense that like the cfl is like the last thing i ever follow in the sport and sporting world true i'm kind of terrible in that sense I'm not on same. purpose it's 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 just like I it's follow football hockey and then yeah. it's CFL yeah. Of football. It's like, yeah, it's like I follow hockey, follow NFL football, NBA basketball. Someone's got to fall off the radar, and the <laughs> CFL is kind of shitty. Like, I don't, yeah, I don't want to bash it, but like it's been like the markets are tiny. You don't want to bash it because Any... your ex girlfriend's dad was a <laughs> yeah. CFL Hall of Fame player. I'm not trying to have my you. skull bashed into my sleep. But, Anywho, uh, so the Grey yeah. Cup was yesterday. Okay. And the Winnipeg Blue Bombers won. Sure. Winnipeg. Winnipeg. <laughs> and I guess they hadn't won in, I don't know, 30 years or something. Yeah. 18 of those years, one guy said, I'm not going to wear pants until they win the cup. And he didn't. So he didn't wear this. he didn't wear pants for 18 years. He just wore shorts. Like one of the players? No, no. no some random, random resident in Winnipeg. Oh, so and then yes, it was a whole thing, and they're like, they were there was hashtags on Twitter yeah, like the pants guy feeling bad for uh, his wife because his wife had to like deal with her husband wearing shorts for eighteen years, and this is in Winnipeg, yeah, like where it's like snowy, it's, it's like negative forty year. all yeah. winter. Oh, nice number. That way, the American people can know that it's yeah, negative forty. <laughs> both Celsius there you go, Fahrenheit. boys. I got you. <laughs> but uh, this... and uh, yes, yeah, so he's finally able to wear pants, and he decided that. Because it was in Calgary, so he flew to Calgary to go watch it. He got flown there for TSN. Oh, did he? TSN did a whole thing about it now. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so he finally wore pants, and his pants of choice were like the hammer pants. Like just camo sweatpants. Oh, God. It was so funny. Yeah. And they should tell him why the he, why he wasn't wearing pants because of the Blue Bombers. Did you say that? Or did I tune out? The, like, because you the bet? until they won. No, the bet that he made with his buddy. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, yeah. So he's not wearing pants because... His buddy was uh, some other team at the time, was a fan of them. And he was like, my team's going to beat yours. And then the shorts guy was like, no, Blue Bombers are going to win. I'm so sure of it. I'm not wearing pants until they win their, a great cup, which is their like Super Bowl. Take their yeah. And he made this bet 16 years ago against his buddy. Who's, and then the Blue Bombers obviously lost back then. And this guy is oh, like, so he just held on to that one. Bet. Yeah, and like if you and like if you were to visualize in your head, you probably like you see what do you see when you think of a guy? I'm not seeing wearing... like a hillbilly Canadian guy wearing like jean jackets, well, jeans, jeans. Well, not <laughs> jeans, denim. denim. Yeah, <laughs> to cut off he is denim like jeans. the biggest like Canadian like like prairie dude looking ever. He has Iconic. like he has like Nike dad shoes, like uh, like a, I forgot what do you whatever you call those kind of plaid heavy overcoat things the flannel yeah. yeah and then like he's obviously rocking shorts everywhere it's so funny dude his legs look like fucking they've been through a war and back though <laughs> they're just red and like oh gosh i'm bringing up a picture hopefully. yeah it was it was a pretty good story i was following that a bit it's, but it's pretty how crazy jokes. how so like the great cup's probably the biggest deal in canada 
for sports, right? In terms of like actual Canadian only sports, uh, unless the Leafs unless, are making unless playoffs. The Leafs no, but like, or can, like like for Canadian only, because like the CFL is like really the only league that we have. Yeah, like if again if the Leafs or like Jets were in the play, were in the Stanley Cup final, then it would be a big deal. But aside from that, no, <clears throat> CFL is the only real Canadian big league that we have here. So it's pretty sad that that's like the biggest deal, and mm-hmm. I heard nothing about it's cause it because they don't market shit, dude. Like if you like, I've noticed this the last few years. Like the CFL, besides a few promos, if you're already watching them on TSN, you wouldn't even know it exists. Like there's nothing on Twitter, there's nothing on Instagram. Like and if you go on, if you go and search it, there will be. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I'm sure you've seen NFL stuff on your so various platforms, right? Just ads, even maybe not, <laughs> maybe not a lot of it. But I, like, I've seen plenty on my Twitter feed. Okay, yeah. Aside because from my, someone in particular, <laughs> aside from my tweets. That you've got, a, you, you must have come came across some form of media from the NFL in the last, yeah. like, yeah. So, like, the CFL doesn't, <sighs> this don't give a fuck. I think the ownership knows their league is on the way out because they haven't really done, had an effort to change it in the last few years. Do you think they even make money on it? I bet they make money because, like, there is a, like, some teams have crazy fan bases, that, but, like, the Argos are, like, the, like the last, the Toronto Argonauts, like, did you even know who they are? I've heard of them. You guys have mentioned them before. Well, like, yeah, they're the Toronto CFL. The team. Toronto yeah. CFL, like they are the bot, like the Toronto lacrosse team, gets more hype than they do. Jeez. So, but it's also because like Toronto has the Raptors, the yeah. Leafs, the Jays. Like they have all the other big yeah, teams. Yeah, but in theory, league. like you'd think a C- you you would think an NFL team would be right up there or CFL team. You would think guess, so. Yeah, especially because they were decent the last couple of years, not this year, but no, but like they you, suck this year. They were awful this year. Well, I'm saying the reason is because like, Canadian football is different than American football, right? Yeah. So you're going to have all people different. who care yeah. more about the Longer bigger sport. And, one less down. Mm-hmm. and they're going to be like, oh, who the fuck bigger cares? <laughs> they're be like, who cares about this hillbilly sport? And then you're going to have all the hillbillies who actually care about yeah. it. Yeah. Well, it's like if, this, if, the, if the Toronto Argonauts were in the Grey Cup and they were like about and, they, and the game was going to be in Toronto, I bet like a, a regular season Jays game would kick them out of whatever stadium they wanted to play in. You know what I mean? Like, that's the kind of like yeah, pull is. Toronto sports has around like their big three: hockey, baseball, basketball. Not even really baseball these past couple seasons. Well, like if the Jays are good, then there's hype around. Them. Yeah, but like that's if they're, but they're not, never they're good. Just so. Trash. They haven't been good since just Donaldson like the was there. Really. Well, the Leafs are up and up and coming. Hey, so we hope. Speaking of which, yeah, lots of Leafs news. Um, <laughs> Can you summarize it in like one sentence? I don't have to. Chief Keith. No, Chief Keith, baby. Can you? Can we make a bet sure. that you will never wear pants until the Toronto Maple Leafs <laughs> win a Stanley Cup? <laughs> no, I like my pants too much. You and you know that you wouldn't be able to wear them for like thirty years. I just got new Lulus. <laughs> No, I, I will say. I will at say. At the very I'm, least, I can't wear them for sixty games. Yeah, it's a long time. I will say that Drew. Out of everyone I've ever met, is probably the most dedicated and loyal fanboy of the Leafs ever. Because I, I don't think I've ever heard him say anything negative about them, unless Man. like they really shit the bed. But I've even then, he's just like negative things about the no, Leafs. No, no, but like, <laughs> but th- generally there will be like a oh, it was because of this person's fault, and never just like the Leafs. Like it's just like this one person fucked up, this one person did this. I guess so. Whereas most people the, are just like the Leafs just suck. We back to the that. Leafs news. We had the, we had our coach, our head coach. I don't know. Did we talk about this at all? I mean, Chief their Keith. head coach, but yes, our yeah, head, our, coach, our head coach. Oh, you're on the team. Yeah, bro. So am Fuck, I. Dude. Yeah, bro. <laughs> so are you. Oh my god. You're on Team Canada, man. <laughs> so my boy Babs was uh got was, fired. Yeah, you got fired. Did you you hear got Marner. You shit? got canned. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm getting to. Fucking douchebag. So it came out yesterday or this morning that. What Babs did was he got Marner when he was a rookie. So it's Marner's first year. And he's like a little Mar- baby. Marner's like an insane player too. And so his first year, he got Marner to write a list of all the players that he thought had the best to worst work, th- work, eth- work, work ethic. ethic. Thank you. And uh, and then he th- he's like, oh, whatever. The coach wants me to do this. I got to listen to the coach. Writes down a list naming some players at the bottom where they just need they just slack all the time. And then Babs reads it out to the whole team and is like, This is what Marner thinks of you guys. And Marner's like, Whoa, whoa, guys, like yeah. Luck- so, sorry, I don't know what. Yeah, luck and then the Marner goes to say, luckily, like the guys I was trashing are the guy are my buddies on the team, right? Yeah. yeah. And like he and, and like, like they knew they knew it wasn't him. Yeah, they knew that like like from the sound of it, the locker room culture was pretty toxic, or with Bob's there at least. Everyone was kind of scared to do anything. Kind of, he's a really old fashioned coach where, like, 
no shit slides down. You know what I mean? Like you gotta get everything done like the way he wants it, or or face the music type thing. Yeah, like his way or the highway. Yeah, gotcha. So and then like that does work for teams like Boston, for example. But like Toronto is a bunch of young, like egotistical. They want to try superstars. Stuff and- yeah, they want to. They want to feel like they're their own person. That's just NA culture. Well, like I'm saying, because like, that's applying. Some it. sports teams have like the author, author, authoritarian. Yeah, it's whatever. Like, I'm, whatever. I'm, I'm going to do it for you, coach. Yeah, like the New England Patriots in football, they have it down to a T. Everyone does their job, and no one fucks around. They they cuck, they kick anyone off the team, no matter how good you are, <laughs> if you fuck up. They cuck them. Yeah, they, they cuck, cuck them. They fuck <laughs> their wife. <laughs> yeah. so, like if you don't act up, yeah, fucking your wife. And right then here. in the NHL, I'd say Boston's like that. Because like they are a very top down team, like the the star the superstars are superstars, and everyone knows that, and the rest of them kind of filing around them. You know what I mean? Like there's yeah. there's so Bergeron and all the those. Leafs were not doing well this year whatsoever. Yeah, like and shit. a lot of people were like, "Fire Babcock, fire Babcock," yeah. and in my head, I'm like, I don't really think it's Bab. I don't think Babs is the problem. Yeah. I just I just don't think so. And I was so ready to not watch at least like three games. I was like, man, I'm not going to watch the next three games. At least fucking blow. Yeah. And then they fired Babcock, which I found out from my girlfriend. I, she doesn't. She <laughs> hates the Leafs. And that was weird in itself. It's just big news. And uh, yeah, huge news. Oh boy. Chief Keefe comes in, won the next two games. Leafs looked like they cared. Oh, the I was, night, I was uh, Wednesday. Wednesday. Hopefully not tonight. I don't think so. But think yeah. So either. All in all, big shake up to the Canadian sports landscape. I can't wait for them not to win the Stanley Cup and then Drew will be like, Don't worry, they probably next won't. year they got it. Man, Chief Keefe is gonna bring home the cup. He won the Memorial Cup what two years ago? Two years I think it was two years ago, uh, two years in a row, right? Maybe I don't know. No, I think no. I don't think they won last year. I, I wish I had Drew's wide eyed innocence. Every single year I've heard the same thing. This this is the year. This is Man, the year they win it. We've never had Chief Keefe though. See that used to be with, that used to be with Minnesota where I was like this is the year, but after like seven years of just constantly getting my heart ripped out and stomped on and pissed on <laughs> and shit on, I finally said fuck it. The only thing I've heard Yet about the recently, Instagram stories still keep coming. <laughs> yeah. The only thing I've heard recently about football news is that something about the Packers got demolished by oh, the Niners or something. It was a big deal. Rinsed on national TV. Was that like a, <laughs> was that a huge, huge that deal? That was huge. So last okay. night the Packers. Also, I'll, I'll keep it quick. Wait, where are the Packers from? Green Bay. Green Bay. And I, they're my. I, least, I know that one. Oh. They're my least favorite team. I don't know where the league. Niners are from. I San hate Francisco? them the most. Uh, yes. San okay. Fran. Uh, or Bay Area, whatever you know how they call those teams. They're they're called the San Fran 49ers. I used but... to think Green Bay was near San Francisco. <laughs> <laughs> well, Green Bay sounds like a little more like, not Wisconsin yeah. or wherever. But I hate Green Bay. Fuck them. I hate Aaron Rodgers. Sure. So I was so happy watching that game. I watched it from start to finish. The Packers <laughs> twice. Like the pa- well, the Packers are they came in as like the fourth best team in the entire league, sure. And the Niners being the second rank. So you thought it was going to be a heavyweight big game. Nope. Packers looked like shit. Aaron Rodgers was too Wait, was too small for the moment. The Niners were ranked higher than the Packers. Yeah. So, so then like, why is it a surprise that they? Well, beat because them? Aaron Rodgers is one of those guys where it's like he can win any game he's in, even if his team is has, even if his whole team's injured, and like the world's against him, he can find a way to win. But still, statistically, they sh- they were supposed to lose anyways. Yeah, but like Aaron Rodgers is like I'll, I I as someone it's, who I I don't like him, but as someone who like watches football i'll admit he's like a top three quarterback of all time like it's just uh, watching some dude with an ego get shit stomped is yeah fun. oh okay and like but like he's a sh- like he's kind of a shitty person like he stopped talking to his whole family jeez yeah and like just kind of sold out his teammates i don't but, know man uh, he hasn't killed anyone in an elevator so he's probably one of the better nfl players <laughs> he hasn't had punched anyone <laughs> i'm waiting for some drama like that to happen in the siege community just versus. start it, man. Yeah. <laughs> well, you can do it right now. Hey, quick, Andy, come here. We got an we'll elevator. Out. We got Andy. <laughs> the fuck? I'll record. Me and Drew record both angles. <laughs> Make some just super clear and stage. Just so, oh man, that'd be pretty funny. No, the only drama <laughs> that would be funny <laughs> if Andy died. No, that'd be hilarious. super staged. Like oh, okay. obviously fake. If you like, you know, no. or just just hit her with your land lanyard again, man. <laughs> <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa! Again, yeah, it was, dude. He was I like so very bad, lightly smacked. She scratched, we already talked about this on the podcast. She scratched oh, the dude. Tesla. He, dude, he like, he slapped her with it. Okay. She was bleeding and crying and screaming. <laughs> <Stop. laughs> <laughs> this <laughs> is a joke. <laughs> the only drama that I've heard about in the siege community, at least, is just like. 
people always just shit on NA players because they're like the culture's so bad. Because in EU, most of the people work really, really hard to get to where they are. And then they stay working hard to make sure they stay in their position. Whereas a lot of people in NA, the rumors are that like as soon as they get picked up by a big org, they just stop showing up to practices. They start slacking. They don't care How do you anymore. How not show up to a practice for an esports team? Yeah, you know, they just don't that, show. That's literally your job. Your job is to play Siege. Wait, when you say practice, do they have like a facility or? Do well, you no, they have like scrims online. Yeah, and just don't just. Yeah. They just no show. Literally, all he has Turn to on your computer yeah. and play for games of Siege. You fucking imbecile. All he has well, I mean, to do is like get up paycheck. in his sweatpants yeah. and play. Yeah. Some to be siege. fair, in sports, don't people also just bail on practice yeah but because that's to. a drive and no, go oh my god it's such a hassle to drive people don't the... really though at least not in hockey like, it's like it's rare enough that you hear about it whenever it does mm. like if you if you skip practice in hockey the news is like blah 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 wasn't that practice they're hurt yeah same with uh-huh. same with football and shit but anyways, well, way, for anyways the, well how actually how often do you practice in sports every day usually. every day yeah oh, okay i'm gonna say because like for siege i think most of the teams will usually have like six hours of scrims a day it's usually it's usually six like or, hours or four hours, like four to six. Well, it's Even not four well, sorry, hours not, a day. It's not scrim solely, but it's like four hours usually of like uh, analysis, looking at stuff, like looking at watching, tactics, like watching films. watching vods, yeah. reviews. It's probably the same with sports. I know with hockey because you travel all the time, right? So yeah. you practice when you can, like when you're not on a bus driving somewhere, uh, and it's like you're you practice game day. Yeah, literally you're, before you're you have a game. Sometimes on the skate, if you if you play like a back to back and you were going to like arizona from toronto mm. or something then like they, you, you want to have time for a practice go hit the ice and hope for the best you do like a morning skate yeah or... well yeah so anyways and na culture for siege that's like the big thing people just say everyone's lazy no one wants to show up and do things and once they get bought out by a big org they get complacent and just don't care you heard yeah. it here and, first from varsity gaming varsity gaming um, is now calling out every single professional <laughs> siege player and it'll be all over the news tomorrow <laughs> varsity gaming calls out na siege players <laughs> the other big thing with na is that they say that most of the people care more about their looks than their actual performance because like a lot of them and are this all... guy wants to go in a suit wow yeah, what an uh, na cor- player cor- correlation right? or causation <laughs> wow what an na player but a lot of them apparently like they just spend all their money on like Louis Vuitton shit, or well, I don't know, every, like the, well, I don't man, know any other big brands. The Gucci. It's like Phase. Check the Instagram fe- mm-hmm. feed of any org, like big guys. Phase, like I guess there's no such thing as Optic anymore. Hundred one thieves. Hundred yeah. thieves. It's just like everyone's got like. Say hundred and one, isn't it? No, it's hundred thieves. Hundred T. It's hundred and one now, baby. <laughs> it's not hundred and one Dalmatians. <laughs> <laughs> That'd man, be another cross. But like Nade Shot's whole YouTube is just like buying stuff well, for like, his team. Well, and- like, I'll give Nate Shot one thing. They managed to capitalize on the hype clothing market type thing. You know, the hype yeah. by releasing merch that was like hype clothing. <laughs> so, like, that's why 100 Thieves is like, I'll give a bit of a pass because the part of their brand is making and they lifestyle have clothing. And they have Drake as an investor too, which is mm-hmm. kind of cool. But that was actually mind blowing because I followed Nade forever. Like, he's been one of my, like, you know, do us have any content creators? He's on creator? a first name basis, Nate, yeah. not Nate Shot. Matt Hag, bro. That's his real name. You know, but don't tell anyone that it's not it's not wikipedia or anything but uh no like since like black ops 2 like seven or eight years ago and then obviously I open up instagram he's taking him to drake i was like the fuck what are you doing boy yeah literally but well, actually speaking of seven years ago i got recommended a youtube video before i came here and it was uh them unveiling the model s oh, seven damn. years ago hmm. or sorry the model x oh, okay. is, that, is that the first one but no, no it's the, SUV. the wings. But still, that was seven years ago. It doesn't yeah. feel that long. And now they have the Cybertruck. Now they got the Cybertruck taking the world by storm. Um, Rob, you actually haven't. I don't think you've heard about this. I what? ordered a Cybertruck. You said you put a hundred bucks down. Yeah, dude, and, and Tesla deposit. stock jumped just because of the pre-orders. I thought it went down it, like six percent. It, it went, went down six percent after today. the reveal. I thought he read a tweet today. Yeah, about how but it's probably it's probably recovering because yeah. like they already they already have two hundred thousand orders. That's, Although people are saying that that's bonkers. Dude. Um, the hundred dollar down payment is just gonna is it just people putting down hundred dollar buy payment, screenshot in their pre-order, and then you're gonna cancel it type thing you know oh i've not heard of anyone who did that like i haven't seen anyone do it but i've just seen on twitter and stuff people well, like, they're saying a hundred dollar buy-in is kind of just like saying put a penny down on like a bagel you know what i mean it, it basically well, is yeah like, relate them, but. well that's exactly what i'm doing as well because i it's refundable so i was like yeah. okay 
I have three years because the one that I want comes out in 2022. Yeah, it so comes I'm out like, in a shit long time from now. So I'm so. like, I have three years to decide whether I actually want to get it or not. And if not, I get the money back. If I do, then I save my place in line. Yeah. I am probably expecting to buy it. So I think you'll trade him on your old ones for it? Or No, I told Annie that she got my S once I get the <laughs> Cybertruck. Yo, Drew, let's find a way to be this guy's boyfriend. He's so. getting me the ATV. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's an ATV? That, well, you can buy an ATV added. But I was like, I'd get that for Drew just because it's like small guy, small car, you know? A Tesla <laughs> ATV. That'd be pretty cool. It hasn't and, quite recovered yet. Um, but it tanked hard. It was only 6%. That's that's a pretty big tank for one stock in one day. Oh, I thought it didn't, it didn't go back up? Uh, it went back up a little bit. I must have been reading fake it news dr- then. It dropped from uh, 354 per share to 333 Mm. I would, uh, from the outside that doesn't seem like that much but i guess for, for Tim investor i guess that means so, a lot so you, you lost 20 bucks per share i guess yeah if you had 100 well, shares it's like two thousand bucks also rob like i know a lot of people will probably say that i'm like a tesla protector Fanboy. or whatever yeah but you do have to be careful on like twitter and stuff when you read that because a lot of people there are a lot of well the tesla haters man there's like a lot of uh what's the term drew for the people who oh shorts people who try to short teslas where like they make money if Tesla loses stock, so they're constantly on Twitter putting out shit like, "Oh, oh Tesla's really? it's like some GTA Five type shit." Basically, and they're like, <laughs> they're like, "Oh, Tesla is gonna lose a shit ton of money with the Model Three. Like, oh, they haven't sold any, but yet they've sold oh, just people a shit to, ton. Try, just trying to shift the. Uh, well, I don't follow anyone that ever bashes it. I just kind of see it and well, yeah, it'll, it'll pop up every. I now follow and Elon then. Musk. He's a fucking great Twitter follow. <laughs> <laughs> he he honestly is. Yeah. Like every now and then, like you just, I forget when I followed him, but like you kind of just come across a Twitter account that you're just like, fuck, why did I not follow this thing earlier? If you're going to follow two people, it's him and the Oompa Loompa, and you have all of your entertainment for. Dude, no, the best Twitter account ever is, uh, it's called. Varsity Gaming TV. That. And is it, can you pet the dog? And it's just a Twitter account going through every dog in every video game, (laughs) seeing if you can. (laughs) Oh, I saw that. It's so fucking good. Try and find it now if it's still there. I'm going to see how many. uh, Did you like one that was like, can you pet the bear in Far Cry? Yeah, I retweeted one that had like 100 or no, 10,000 retweets. It was like, can you pet? No, it was, can you pet the dog in Far Cry? Because, or no, it wasn't even Far Cry. There was a bear in Far Cry. There was a bear in Far Cry. That's the one I saw. Cheeseburger. I, re- I remember retweeted that one. There was another one that like, just killed me. Oh, it was a d- one in Dark Souls. And so that clip of you just getting <laughs> eaten by this giant dog. And it's like you cannot pet the dog in Dark Souls. Yo, this guy's up to uh, almost 18,000 Twitter followers. I am. And almost 27,000 Instagram followers. Jeez, bro. You're climbing. I don't. Buddy's popping off. You got to keep content flowing to, to your hungry. Uh, audience bro i actually still have more photos from japan to post but i, I haven't posted in a week and i feel like i've already missed the window on posting about my trip yeah, you have you can still done. just got but you can wait till next week and then put throwback I, and, I, and that's more acceptable that's true. true if you wait till thursday just throw back yeah. thursday i can uh also put up a decent amount of photos for vegas hopefully yeah if you get a picture in a suit oh for that i'm also gonna have to figure out what i'm gonna do because realistically the option they're gonna give me for a flight back is monday morning which means i won't get here till like 7 p.m that's fine you so what, are you, what, well, I'm, what do you mean a trip to like, vegas is obviously get into pierce until seven like i won't get back to the apartment probably until like yeah eight or nine well the flight to vegas is quick it's like two hours no it's not it's not at all wait may, may, may i have a confused with orlando but i don't, I don't remember it being too it's bad it's not two I feel hours like florida's not two hours either no it's not f- either i had a, i just remember being on a really quick plane ride i thought vegas wasn't maybe three vegas hours? is like a six hour flight Plus the time difference. So like since they're three hours behind us, when I'm flying here, it'll be like a nine hour flight technically. I'm so well, I don't know if that's technically. You should. Someone's got to investigate that sentence Christian just said. For <laughs> well, I'm saying like nine hours and like that. I, I was, see what you're getting at. Yeah. It's just like not when like you AKA, AK, he, he can bend time to it's his like, will. The time AK. change doesn't increase the amount of time that you're no, in No, but air. I'm saying like the time you leave to the time you <laughs> Technically, land. Technically. Clock to clock. It well, reduces the amount of time you're in the air because the faster you go, the slower time goes. So fuck off. it's My even is less than six right hours. Right now, bro. Okay, I'm looking up the time. Rob, you, you, you think knew it's that, right? two hours. Not two hours, but I don't. for some reason, I thought it wasn't that long. Hold on, Rob. You knew that, right? What? The faster you go, the slower time goes. Something to do with law of physics or some shit. Yeah. But it's like <laughs> legit. Like, so if I'm going like, ooh, they time tested, by they, slower. They put a jet pilot up in a jet with a clock, and they made sure the clocks were at the same time. And then they had him fly around the world a couple times, and his clock was actually, like, slower. Than the one by on the how ground. much like enough to, for it oh, to, like to be oh like milliseconds oh okay 
There's also um I know I used to be a huge Guinness World Records person. Oh, I, when I, was I used to borrow those, borrow those books from the book fair every yeah, year. And, I just uh, used to steal them. Not like steal them, but like <laughs> I'd read them in the library instead of buying them. And I remember reading one where it was just like an astronaut who's been in space so many times that he uh what was it? He's like He's one fucked. one hundredth of a second in the future, technically. That's blessed. Damn. But I was like, sick. I don't know how that works, but just, just have your laptop and just buying stocks as fast as you can. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I already know what happens. He's a one one hundredth in the future. He's like, watch out, there's gonna be an ant there. <laughs> <laughs> one second. I'm trying to still pull up the flights. It's not showing wow, me direct. Uh, everything I bet is, you I can do it in like milliseconds. Well, everything that I'm pulling up is it has a stop, even though I put direct flight only. It still says like Oh yeah, the flights to Vegas. I, that's another thing I remember. They always try to connect you somewhere else. Yeah, it goes well, to Vegas, so it's cheap. Okay, so total time in the air, if you just ignore the layover time, is six hours. What the fuck? This Dude, one says I, just, I this swear one says I'm, four hours fifty four minutes at the lowest time. I swear I'm just must that's be from zoned Detroit out. to Vegas. Maybe. Probably not, though. Wait, yours is from Detroit to Vegas? Well, it's because it goes Toronto to Detroit, Detroit to Vegas. The Ve- the Detroit to Vegas is just four just hours. Just Man, nonstop <laughs> Pearson to Las Vegas on WestJet. Five hours. Okay, well, there. So. Oh, I remember that. I watched Game of Thrones when I was on the plane. Oh, my God. <laughs> suddenly, it's all coming back yeah, to Yeah, suddenly, it's all coming back. What were you looking at, Christian? I was just on There's Red like Tag. like three nonstop flights. I don't know. It wouldn't pull up any for me. Are you on Red Tag? Just uh, Google it, bro. one. <laughs> That's an agency. They're always Whatever. trying to milk money out of you. Literally just Google Pearson to Las Vegas and they all <laughs> pop up. But the point is, <laughs> is that I'll likely fly back Sunday night so I can get here Monday morning. All right. And so also because, so at all these siege events, there's always an after party. And we've... If you get invited this time. So yeah, we've only ever invited. gotten in twice. One, we actually got an invite. And the other time, we only were allowed in because the media room that we were already in is where they were having the after party because it was a bar. So, oh, then, like, oh, so we, we literally just sat out. there. We're like, we know it's here. So we just sat there for three hours waiting for the party <laughs> to start. That and seems weird that you wouldn't get invited. It who, does. Who, like, who, who goes to it if not the well, content creators? Yeah. It's like it's for all the pros, for all the people like actually playing. And I think that stuff. pros have less of a pull than you guys do, though, in terms of like Ubisoft's grand scheme of marketing. But like, I don't know. And also, <laughs> like if you're going to get invited to play on stage but not be considered going to the like, it just yeah. seems weird to me. Yeah, for Raleigh, we got to go on stage, but I don't know. It's uh, I'm sure Ubisoft does a very great job and treats you guys all very well. Just so there's a few questions that, that mm-hmm. leave me bewildered sometimes. But that actually might be the only way we can get invited to an after party is we if we play on stage. There you go. When you wear your maybe that's why you don't get invited. You don't wear. It. Oh, but for yeah. what? I don't get invited because I don't wear a suit. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> Life, life discovered, or life hack discovered, or whatever. What? <laughs> you know, Opposite of a life hack. You know what I'm trying to get at. I'll try to get the suit soon, though. Mm-hmm. Uh, we should wrap up though, because yes, I have to go. run and do some Rob's job doing a mock trial. prep, and it's, it's the only thing on my mind right now. So might as well just don't fail. To. Yeah. Make sure to shave. I'm gonna shave. Shave. Put on a three piece. You're good to go. Just label my forehead down with uh, hairspray to get that block the sweat. You know. Apparently. But uh, I don't know if that's the play, but you do you, buddy. Well, so either way, I'll be a, I'll either be a shiny mess or a sweaty mess. So let's figure out how it goes. But <laughs> all right, well, we'll be back. Wish me luck. Keep you, in, keep me in your prayers, everybody. XOXO well, XO gossip girl. <laughs> you, you like you, whatever. <laughs> but anyways, uh, we'll hopefully be back. Maybe with the video next week. If not, it'll be the week after. We still have to sort out logistics and do tests and stuff. Hundred mm-hmm. uh, percent next week. With I'll try. I, I'm gonna shipping. start ordering everything now. Shipping and handling. <laughs> That's what we gotta forget. Okay. Well, whatever. Okay. Bye, bye guys. guys.